EBS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Leader. There's a conveyor belt justice system happening in our courts, the single justice procedure. It can be used when an individual or company has been charged with a minor criminal offence, and the case is decided by a magistrate without going to court. It's being used to help relieve some of the pressure on our court system. But an evening standard investigation has exposed serious flaws with this method of justice. Some of the scandals uncovered are a sick pensioner convicted of breaking the COVID lockdown with a visit to his allotment, parents unlawfully fined in dark corners of the justice system over truancy allegations, and women who attended the vigil for Sarah Everard prosecuted while oblivious to criminal cases against them. Joining me now is our courts correspondent, Tristan Kirk. This is uh, an investigation into something called the single justice procedure, which for those people who don't know about it, which is probably a a large proportion of the listeners, uh, is a system whereby people can be prosecuted and and potentially convicted and fined um, in behind closed doors hearings based on written evidence alone without them being present and and, and potentially rather large um, fines can be handed out by a single magistrate sitting on their own um, with the assistance of a legal advisor um, going through tens, dozens, sometimes even hundreds of cases at a time. Um, It's a system which has drawn a, a significant amount of criticism over the years. It was introduced in 2015 to deal with low-level crimes, but by 2020 was being used for COVID offences, vast numbers of COVID offences. It's not particularly transparent. Um, The public have very little idea what's happening within this court system. They can't turn up for an open court hearing to to listen to what's going on. And it's only people like myself uh, in the media who really have the opportunity to explore some of the details of the cases that are going through the single justice procedure. And there are some significant concerns that we've we've been bringing to light about the, the quality of the justice that's administered through this process, um, whether it's through cases being dealt with in, in literally a matter of seconds. So serious questions about whether the, the evidence and, and the, the mitigating circumstances have been uh, adequately looked at by the magistrates sitting there. Um, there are cases that we brought to light where um, older people have been prosecuted in circumstances where they're, they're not very well, and, and you start to wonder about why those prosecutions went ahead at all. And there are cases that we've, we've highlighted where, quite simply, something's gone wrong. There are errors in, in the case itself. There is key evidence missing, or there is... Um, question marks, serious question marks about the lawfulness of the process itself. Tristan, you've done an investigation into the single justice procedure. What are some of the shocking examples of cases that you've heard about? I mean, this is is a process that deals with uh, literally hundreds of thousands of uh, court hearings, court cases every year. So there is a vast amount of of material going through the single justice procedure. And and my investigations into it started simply to, to look into what was happening within the within the system to see uh what kind of cases are being dealt with and how they're being dealt with. And it, as you delve deeper, you come across um the, the, the evidence that's been presented and some of the mitigation that's coming forward. And some of the things that I've I've found are, are genuinely quite shocking that this actually happens within our court system and, and even more shocking for me that it happens within a court system that isn't open to the public necessarily and there's a, there's a significant amount of transparency difficulties. Um, one of them that springs to mind uh, at the top of the list is is a 78-year-old woman who was prosecuted uh, by the, uh, the DVLA over a, an unpaid fee and um, she was she was sent letters saying you are being prosecuted you haven't paid this money and then when it came to court um some mitigation was put in by a member of her family saying that um this woman had actually um had a fall she has dementia uh, she's not very well at all uh, mental health difficulties and at the time that she uh, in inverted commas committed the offence uh, she'd actually ta- had a fall, been taken into hospital, and is now in permanent care. 
that that kind of mitigation put forward, you would think, um, would halt a, a prosecution in its tracks. But actually, um, that woman was convicted by the court and she was issued with a fine, a fine to take into account the details of the case, but a fine nonetheless. And, and that's not an isolated incident. Um, there, there are pensioners who are prosecuted for very, very small sums of money that they haven't paid. And um, it, when they put in their mitigation, they're not very well. They're confused by the process. They've lost letters. These are people who perhaps couldn't be expected to to deal with that kind of thing on their own when put into a court process and need that extra help that the single justice procedure just simply doesn't seem to offer. Other stories we've run in, involve uh, parents being prosecuted for serious truancy offences in, in, in circumstances where it was actually unlawful to do that. And, and lots and lots of COVID prosecutions that were done, uh, and I use this word advisedly, done entirely in secret whereby they happened behind closed doors and the courts simply forgot to tell anyone that these, these cases were being dealt with at all. Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more from our courts correspondent, Tristan Kirk, about what can be done to reform this area of the justice system. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Still with me is Tristan Kirk, the Evening Standards Courts Correspondent. Tristan, why is there so much secrecy around this single justice procedure? Well, the courts themselves don't say that these things are a, a secret. They say that uh, there, there is transparency. And uh, as somebody who's looked into this for a significant period of time, I'd say there's, there's an enormous question mark floating over that suggestion. It was a process that was introduced in 2015. Um, by Parliament uh, as a way of dealing with low-level cases faster, more efficiently, things like um, speeding, uh, driving offences, not paying for a train fare, not paying for a TV licence, those those kind of littering, those kind of offences that, that used to be dealt with in open court. They wanted to deal with them much quicker and without um, burdening the open court process with those cases. There is, there is something to, to be said for speeding up the process and making it more efficient. But what one of the critical things that they said at the stage of introducing it was that there must be transparency. Open justice must not be lost in, in this process. And sadly, uh, my investigations say that open justice is lost regularly. Uh, there are flaws in the system that just simply have not been addressed. Some of the flaws are as simple as the court uh, forgetting to tell anyone about single justice procedure cases that they are dealing with, um, extracting the, um, the the paperwork that these cases are based on from the courts can be a, a torturous process that um, that would put off most journalists from doing it if they knew about it at all. And th- and that's another problem is that very little is is known about the single justice procedure and how it's supposed to be transparent. Uh, in my opinion, the Ministry of Justice and the, the court service don't do enough to promote the transparency measures that are there if you know where to look. And, and there are other issues about um, how cases are presented to the media. They, they, I mean, they're, they're done in bulk. They're, they're difficult to negotiate when they're on the uh, the court listings. And, and some of the details can only be, be got at by... Um, by asking for them from court officials. And those court officials might not even know that they're allowed to give those details out. Are there any plans to reform this area of the court system? Well, unfortunately, I, I don't think there are at the moment. Um, there's, a, there's a process going on at the moment where the Ministry of Justice is, is asking for opinions on the way that the court service works, particularly around open justice. And, um, and, and one part of that is looking at the single justice procedure and seeing if there's changes that need to be made. Um, but I don't think there's anything on the table. Uh, if you ask me that if you're going to do a, a justice system which is, which is closed off to the public, then your transparency measures have to be absolutely foolproof. They have to work every time. And because the problem is that without the media being able to look into these processes and see what's going on, it becomes very difficult to, to spot when, when the, the, the errors are made and when the problems are occurring. So those cases that I've managed to get into um, 
involving the pensioners being taken to task by the uh, the DVLA, people who have got significant health problems being um, being prosecuted, perhaps when they're not in a position to defend themselves or represent themselves. Unfortunately, it's it's very hard to to scrutinise that kind of a process without without transparency being boosted. This isn't a process that is necessarily all terrible. I know we in the media focus on 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 the bad things that we come across and 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 some of the things that need addressing. But these are low level cases that they should be dealt with efficiently. It should be a process that is dealt with so that the defendant is. Um, is, is not overburdened but in the same respect the defendant has to know what's going on they have to be aware of their rights and they have to be able to participate in the justice process if they want to and i think that doesn't happen a lot of the time because this is what people refer to as con- conveyor belt justice it's rubber stamping it's going through so quickly that people aren't necessarily aware that they can take part in the process and, and exercise their rights You can read more on this story and others in the Evening Standard newspaper or on our website, standard.co.uk. And that's it from this episode of The Leader. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm.